This LIT video is about biliary atresia. In this video, I will begin with an introduction before reviewing the epidemiology, pathogenesis, and etiology of biliary atresia. I will then discuss the clinical presentation, diagnostic workup, and management of this condition. Biliary atresia is a rare disorder of the biliary duct system, as both hepatic and intrahepatic ducts are affected, causing prolonged cholestatic neonatal jaundice. It can lead to liver failure and is the most common indication for liver transplantation in infants and children. Biliary atresia has a prevalence of 1 in 10,000 to 1 in 15,000 live births and occurs slightly more frequently in females. Two types of biliary atresia have been described. The first is syndromic or embryonic, which represents 10 to 20% of cases. This type of biliary atresia is associated with other congenital anomalies. It is thought to be due to a developmental insult during differentiation of the hepatic diverticulum from the foregut of the embryo. The other type of biliary atresia is called non-syndromic or perinatal. This is characterized by progressive biliary obstruction. The origin of this type of biliary atresia are thought to occur later in gestation. Another way to classify biliary atresia is according to which level of the biliary lumen is affected. Type 1 is occlusion of the common bile duct. Type 2a is obliteration of the common hepatic duct. Type 2b is obliteration of a common bile duct, hepatic and cystic ducts, with cystic dilation of ducts at the porta hepatis and no gallbladder involvement, whereas type 3 is obliteration of the common hepatic and cystic ducts as demonstrated in the image. While it is poorly understood, the development of biliary atresia is likely multifactorial, including viral infection, genetics, anatomical remodeling, and immunological mediated inflammation. One possible etiology is intrauterine or perinatal viral infection. Several viruses have been identified as possible agents, including areovirus type 3, rotavirus, cytomegalovirus, papillomavirus, and Epstein-Barr virus. Though that disease is not an inherited disorder, several genetic mutations have been identified as possible etiologies for the disease. For example, mutations of the CFC1 gene, which has evolved in left-right axis determination of humans, have recently been identified in a few patients with syndromic biliary atresia. Other genes having a possible role in the development of the disease include macrophage migration inhibitory factor, transcription factor ZIC3, jacket 1, keratin 8, and keratin 18. The intrahepatic biliary system is formed during early gestation through the remodeling of ductal plates, which are formed by primitive hepatocytes and associated mesenchyme. It is possible that non-syndromic biliary atresia might be caused by a failure of bile duct remodeling at the hepatic hilum, leading to a persistence of fetal bile ducts poorly supported by the mesenchyme. Several studies have also investigated whether immunological mediated inflammation might play a role in the development of the disease. This may be due to abnormal expression of human leukocyte antigen. Biliary atresia usually presents as prolonged jaundice with an onset before 8 weeks of life. If a child presents with jaundice starting only after 8 weeks old, other differentials should be considered. Other signs and symptoms of biliary atresia include pale colored stools and dark brown urine and hepatomegaly. If left untreated, children with the disorder have normal growth for the first few months, then growth retardation, anemia, and malnutrition from malabsorption of fat-soluble vitamins. When investigating a child with suspected biliary atresia, a full liver panel should be ordered to check for raised conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, which then confirms cholestatic jaundice. In terms of imaging, an ultrasound of the hepatobiliary system can be done to assess the anatomy of the bile ducts and to rule out differentials such as cholidocal cyst. Other investigations include hepatobiliary scintigraphy to assess the patency of the extrahepatic bile ducts. The gold standard and most reliable tests for diagnosis is a liver biopsy and or intraoperative cholangiogram. The changes of biliary atresia affect intrahepatic and extrahepatic bile duct systems. 
A liver biopsy is always done when a child is strongly suspected of having biliary atresia. On gross examination, the liver is enlarged and firm. The liver parenchymal is fibrotic with signs of cholestasis. On histologic exam, biliary tracts contain inflammatory cells surrounded by minuscule ducts. The disease eventually progresses to end-stage cirrhosis. The following image demonstrates an operative view of complete extrahepatic biliary atresia. One surgical management of the disease is the Kasai procedure, or hepatic portoenterostomy. To perform this procedure, a dissection is taken up to the right and left portal vein branches. The jejunum is anastomosed to the hepatic hilum. In terms of prognosis, long-term survival is at 25 to 70%. A favorable outcome is demonstrated if the procedure is done before 60 days of age and if the child has significant decrease in serum bilirubin and fecal signs of good bowel excretion. The most common complication of the Kasai procedure is cholangitis. Cholestasis is the main risk factor for cholangitis as it allows bacteria to ascend easily. Therefore, prophylactic, broad-spectrum antibiotics are given post-operatively to prevent cholangitis. Post-operative management of patients who undergo the Kasai procedure should include an NG tube and IV fluids. Patients should be advised that recurrent pale-colored stools is an ominous sign and one needs to re-establish bowel flow immediately. Other long-term complications include portal hypertension, intrahepatic cysts, hepatopulmonary syndrome, and hepatic malignancy. The other management of biliary atresia is transplantation. Biliary atresia is the most common indication for liver transplantation in children. It is required for those that fail portoenterostomy. Liver transplants may even be required in children with successful portoenterostomy if the disease naturally progresses to end-stage chronic liver failure. The five-year survival of children who undergo transplantation is 80 to 90 percent. In summary, biliary atresia is a disorder of the bile ducts that causes fibrosis of the bile ducts. It can eventually progress to cirrhosis. Several possible etiologies are suggested, of which the etiology is likely multifactorial in nature. Children present with cholestatic jaundice before eight weeks of life. Liver biopsy makes definitive diagnosis, and it can be managed operatively by Kasai procedure or liver transplantation. Quiz time. Question one. The following pathological characteristics can be seen in biliary atresia, except A. Dilation of the common hepatic bile duct. B. Fibrosis of the extrahepatic bile duct. C. Liver is enlarged and firm on gross examination. D. Presence of inflammatory cells in the biliary tracts. E. Signs of liver cirrhosis. The answer is dilation of the common hepatic bile duct. Question 2. Benjamin is a two-month-old boy that recently underwent a Kasai procedure after being diagnosed with biliary atresia. Ten months later, his mother noticed that his abdomen is becoming increasingly full. On examination, he is jaundiced and has clubbed fingernails. There is splenomegaly. What is the most likely cause of the splenomegaly? A. Acute cholangitis. B. Chronic liver disease. C. Acute hepatitis. D. Portal hypertension. Or E. Hyperbilirubinemia. The answer is D.